Over the past six months, I've experienced two different but similar issues with the recording button on two different Panasonic DR60 recorders. The recording button is this button with the red stripe underneath my thumb. Normally what you do is you press once to start the recording and then you press it a second time to stop the recording. Well, the first recorder would require a lot of force in order to make that button work. And the second recorder, I could push as hard as I wanted, but nothing would happen. I'm going to play for you the actual videos that I sent to the people that were interested in these two different units with the two different problems. And then I'm going to talk more about what I did in order to solve this issue. So I want to get this uh, unit off to you, but I'm having a problem with this record button just underneath my thumb here. It'll work, but I got to press in really hard in order for it to, uh, to record. So I want to do a little bit of research and try and see if I can get this button fixed for you. And then um, if I can get it fixed, I'll let you know and get it off to you. Okay, thanks. But what happens is, is it turns on, but you'll see that I'm pushing this button, but it's not recording. It's like this button won't push in, it's stuck. It was obvious right off the bat that the issue had something to do with this record button itself. So I decided to take both recorders apart and take a look underneath this button to figure out what was going on. Now I can't show you both of those units because they're sitting with my technician right now about to be fixed. However, I did take a Panabox apart so I can explain what I found. The Panabox and the DR60 share a lot of parts and they definitely share the parts that I want to talk about. So when I took the face cover off, the first thing I noticed is that if I press down on that button, it moved freely up and down. So right off the bat, I knew that that button was not the issue. And when I turned it around, I discovered that it's just a plastic part that moves up and down and it's got a little peg on it and that peg pushes down on something on the circuit board. So I traced down what that was. Let me just zoom in a little bit. And it turns out it's this little button on the circuit board. And also it turns out there's a lot of these little buttons. Well, I'm not sure about a lot, but there's a few of them on here. I think there's three on the DR60. So one of these was probably faulty. So what I did is I took my screwdriver and I pushed down on that round button. And sure enough, the first button it took a lot of pressure to push it in. And on the second unit, it wouldn't push in at all. So I'd found my answer. This button right here was faulty and needed to be replaced. As you can see, I've removed the two circuit boards and I put a piece of tape around each and I've numbered this one number one and this one number two so that I can put them back in the corresponding case they came out of. And uh, I put an arrow on the tape as well, pointing to the faulty switch. It's the same switch on both circuit board. And I'm gonna be giving this to my technician and he's gonna be removing these faulty switches and putting in brand new ones. I recommend getting somebody that knows what they're doing to do this. Don't try it yourself because there's a good chance you'll fry your circuit board. Um, you know, these technicians, they know what they're doing. And when I showed this to my technician, he goes, oh, he goes, yeah, I'm familiar with that switch. So we're really lucky in a sense because a lot of these parts are not available anymore. Um, these units were built back in the 1990s and you just simply can't get the parts anymore. However, this particular switch that uh, we're replacing uh, is pretty common and, uh, you know, people in the industry know what it is, how to remove it and how it works and whatnot. Now, this is the actual part number. If you ever need to order a switch yourself, let me zoom in there a little bit. It's, uh, it's actually a Panasonic part number. It's EVQPLMA15. And as I say, you can still get these. You could just type in that uh, part number in the internet and it'll probably come up where you can order them. They usually come in a strip of 15. And as you can see, it's the exact same part that we're gonna be removing. So you can definitely uh, fix your unit if you're having this issue. The parts are available. Um, I was originally thinking of taking a, a good part off, let's say a, a, a radio, because all those parts are still on these radios that you can buy relatively inexpensively before I convert them and use that. But there's no point in this situation because these parts actually do exist brand new. I just got the two circuit boards back from my technician and I pushed down on this button. Technically it's a switch, but I call it a button. 
Um, and it's working like it should, so this is going to be interesting. I installed one of the circuit boards back in the casing, and I'm going to uh, install this one now, and let's just see if both units are back up and running. I just finished installing both circuit boards, and now for the moment of truth, as I like to call it. This is the first DR60, and the issue with it was that I had to press down really hard on the record button in order for it to record. So let's see how it does now with the new switch installed. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Works perfectly. It's like brand new. Uh, the second one here, this, when I went to press the record button, it I couldn't press it at all. It was basically stuck and it was 100% stuck. Couldn't, couldn't push it down at all. So let's try this one. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Again, works perfectly. So that's a great little fix if you have that issue. Uh, the switches are really cheap and I'm sure you could find a local technician to replace that for you and get your unit working again. Anyway, hope that helps somebody out there.